Do you live in the US and want fast, fresh and tasty meals without the hassle of shopping or all that hard work preparation? Well, don't you worry. As a lazy man, I've got you covered. Try America's number one meal kit service, HelloFresh, and get yourself fresh, pre-portioned ingredients delivered direct to your door. So why not eat well, stay healthy, and avoid the cost of regular takeout by trying HelloFresh? Just click the link in the description below for a special limited time discount and free shipping as well. Enjoy. Well, isn't this a lovely luxury to have? We are in 14th place and have a peaceful finish to the season with Crystal Palace. We have wrapped up survival. We've wrapped up at least 14th place. And due to a bit of change to the fixture schedule, we now face big rivals Crystal Palace in one of our final two games. Can we go and win it and finish on a high? And will we finish high enough to attract some job offers? Yes, hello and welcome along to part 82 of the head coach with me, Daniel. We are back today for our final two games of the Premier League season as we start against Carl Huffkins Brighton side before facing Aston Villa in a repeat of the final day last year. Both sides are in the mid-table mix with a couple of games to go and so are we, which is absolutely crucial. 10 points clear of the bottom three, guaranteed to finish 13th or 14th. We are very happy with our season's work, especially when you consider where we were 10 or 15 games ago. We've really turned it around. We've got on the front foot and we've now got an opportunity to finish on a big high. So if you're looking forward to seeing if we can and in what budget we get given for the summer with Dougie Friedman and Crystal Palace, then please do put a thumbs up on it. I'm guessing not a lot because the finances somehow still dross. I don't know where this Premier League money's going. I don't know what they're spending it on. They must have big loans. They do. They've got a bank loan that they're paying a million a month on, but that does finish next season. So hopefully, if we can keep the club out of trouble next year, if we're still here, we'll then have a big summer budget the following one because that's going to save us 12 million quid. Still not enough to get us back into the black financially, though. So hopefully, we'll be able to do all of that. But for now, let me show you the schedule and what has been happening since you were last here. Of course, you watched double Chelsea as we beat them in the league. Then, of course, had that disappointment in the FA Cup. And in truth, since then, it hasn't been as good, but we have picked up a few results. We've only lost the two games and we managed to get a few draws. But a few little injuries, some knocks and getting a couple of younger players in have all contributed to maybe a slightly less inspiring finish than we would have liked. So we started off against Southampton with a one-all draw, went behind right at the start, but Chris Lewis scored a beautiful goal to equalise. Lovely little control and a dink over the keeper from the edge of the box. A bit like Carlton Morris in FM21, but without the Maisie run at the start, if you remember that special moment. Against Nottingham Forest, we won 1-0 away from home. That was the moment I knew it was done. Rodrigo Ribeiro scored a late goal in a game we absolutely dominated, and I knew at that point survival was secured. Good job as well, because our two trickiest games of the running went badly. A 3-1 defeat away at Bournemouth. They've got one of the best strikers in the world, if I show you. He is sublime. Don't know how he's only a squad player at Bournemouth, but he's scoring goals. He's really improving. Yeah, that's why they're up in the top seven. Then against Newcastle, we lost by two goals to nil as well. But back-to-back -back draws to get the unbeaten run going since. Luigi Castro with the opening goal in a draw against West Ham. And a two-all against Wolves. We were two down early on. We fought back really well. Jimmy Campbell and Chris Lewis scoring the two goals. So now it's Brighton and then it's Aston Villa. We'll go as strong as we can in the first game, given that it's only been three days, because we know that Brighton are the rivals of this club. So let's see how we get on in it. It's going to be an important one. Let's see what team we can put out. Let's see how we can finish the season. And hopefully we can make the fans happy on the way. Back in a minute to run through the team. Well, in fact, I've got no reason not to stick with this. Chris Richards is struggling a bit, so he's on the bench anyway. But the rest of it is full strength, so why not go for it? We've sort of done what we said in certain areas. I know not with Lewis at the moment because he's picked up a knock, but he had been doing so beforehand. Guy Vaknin has suddenly found an awful run of form again. Comes out of absolutely nowhere, don't know why. Might give him a bit of warning for his recent form as well. And this is the problem, when he's not got someone to push him, that's maybe when it starts to go wrong, but he scored the crucial goals to get us out of trouble, so I can't really complain. We've bought in Rodolfo at centre-half for Richards, as we mentioned. That youth, that future planning that we're doing. 
And Mitch runs out on the left, which is why Campbell's been playing as well. Of course, got himself that goal in the last game too. It means our 11 in full is Jankovic in goal. Rodriguez and Esnault, the fullbacks with Rodolfo and Polido as centre-half. Grusnov and Campbell on the wings with Castro and Rothwell in the middle. And then up front, Guy Vaknin and Ruben Ribeiro, the two that we're looking for to get us the goals. Ribeiro has found a bit of form again, which has made up for Vaknin's dry spell. I wouldn't mind them both getting on the score sheet tonight. Can we get the win against rivals Brighton? Perhaps rediscover that defensive form before we brought Rodolfo in for Richards. There's only one way to go and find out. Into the game we go. The penultimate one of the season. It's relaxing in the grand scheme of things, but this is a big game for the club. And it's still a pretty good Brighton side in mid-table. One of those we've got to try to overhaul next year. Van Heck and Shalabar still there in defence. Lamptey still at fullback as well. They've brought in the likes of Aitnori, Samare. It's just a good Premier League team, isn't it? Dario Sarmiento's on the bench, the man they nicked from us about, what, 18 months ago in a transfer window. And they've got a few good players on there as well. So it's a strong squad. It's a good team. There's a reason they're pushing for that top half. So let's go and say it matters against the rivals. Oh, what a reaction. Don't overdo it, lads. Where have you gone there? Let's talk to the defence. Make me proud. Good, a few of them inspired. Midfield, I want you to make me proud as well. And we've got the reaction. Attackers, I'm going to tell you the pressure's off because I know how you guys are. Let's go and get through the tunnel interview into the first half. We've got the chance to relax and play good football. And on the front foot against Brighton, it would be the perfect time to deliver. And here we go. We've just a couple of minutes gone. We're on the front foot on the right-hand side. Rodriguez putting in a brilliant ball. And Ribeiro heads in the top corner. We went to VAR, but it was all right. It stays 1-0 to Crystal Palace. It is the perfect start. I've got so used to conceding early goals in this save, particularly in this stint with Crystal Palace. Definitely not got used to scoring them, but as it stands, we go up to 13th, just four points behind Brighton. And where we were, that's considered a good season, I think. As Vaknin gets the ball to Rodriguez on the right. Crosses block towards Ribeiro, who's up again. Goalkeeper does well this time. Comes and takes it away from the defenders. We obviously proved they couldn't cope with him last time as Rodolfo heads the ball away as far as Williams. Big switch of play and we've been caught out a bit here. Jimmy Campbell out of position. Esnault getting back. Can he stop the cross? He does. Second one in's all right though. Over hit but Rodriguez keeps it in. Back to eight Nori. Into Williams deflects wide. Polito does well to block it. 25 minutes gone. That's the first real threat they've had but it, it only takes a moment with us. We've been really weak defensively recent games. I know it's new players coming in from January, getting used to the side. It was never going to stay 1-0 every week, but we are going to have to get better next year as Ribeiro heads wide again. Half an hour gone, we've generally been the better team. And although Brighton have had more shots, the goal threat is no greater. Half an hour here is 1-0 up. Looking at Aston Villa, who also had a game in hand, trying to find out where it was because they still had an outside chance at Europe. But they're not playing tonight. And at the moment, we still lead as Shalabar goes for the long ball. Big switch to Lamptey. Great first time ball. But was it offside? The question remains. No, it wasn't. Jankovic beaten at the near post. It is Rodolfo's side where he's getting caught. Brighton now getting on top in this game. They've got a slightly better side on paper. But we could really do with a slightly better performance. So we'll encourage them. We'll get them out on this front foot. And hopefully we'll get a response. Well, an hour on the clock. We've had the first couple of shots in this half, but we've not really had a goal threat. And we've now got a lot of tired legs. You can see the difference playing on a Sunday instead of Saturday. So let's see who we can bring on here. We've got Castro really struggling in the middle. Tom Davis on for him. Rothwell for Keita, similar experience. At the back, well, we could take Rodolfo off, but he's playing well. Rodriguez the same as a young player. So maybe Grusnov will come off on the right for Kuto. We'll do the whole midfield and then Grom back on on the left for Campbell. And then up front, Guy Vaknin struggling again. Just cannot get him back in form. So we'll save the last one in case of injury. If not, we'll make it with 15 to go. Well, isn't it a good job we saved it? We barely got to the end of that sentence and then we had an injury. So Morgan Gibbs-White going to have to go up front because we're running out of strikers here. I'm not sure which of the two roles he's best in. Advance forward by the looks of it. So we're going to have to do that. It's not ideal with a quarter of the game to go. But fingers crossed it won't affect us defensively and our shape. We always say it, don't we? Brighton v Palace normally ends 1-1. Although this time, Shalabar's in at the back post. Samare back in. Goalkeeper caught in no man's land. Jankovic may be struggling with the big game here. 
But 1-1 one, one is the regular score for these two sides, albeit in real life that didn't happen a week or so ago. But we're doing the Palace proud. Both sides seem to be struggling to hit the target. We've had eight, 28 shots between us and only four of them. The one in seven rate, it is not good for the strikers here. But we're doing all right. We've come back into the game and we get another point. Three draws in a row, comfortably safe. And if we get one on the final day, we'll have reached the magic 40. Definitely different to last season. And we do have to be fair with this, don't we? If we don't win the final game of the season, we will finish on less points than last year. That is something we've got to bear in mind. It's a poorer standard of league. There's a couple of teams at the bottom that aren't great. And although we're comfortably safe, although we've put in a better display against a lot of teams, we're playing good football now, we could finish on less points. That has got to be remembered. Back in a minute for Villa, a repeat of the final day last year. And then we'll get through to the season review and see what we've got to work with in the summer. Well, time for the final game of the season. And there's a few players potentially struggling today. Esnault being one, Mitran again and Clementson too. But we'll find a way. And then Chris Lewis is back to fitness and should be involved. So let's go and get through it. Let's pick our team for today's game. 10th v 13th, both sides with nothing to play for. Now we need West Ham to stop Watford getting into Europe. That could be a disaster. Let's go and get through the tactical meeting. Let's go and talk to the lads. We'll be back in a minute to run through the team for our final game of the season. Well, just a couple of changes for this game in the end, and one of them's enforced. In fact, you could argue both are. We've not taken Esnault out because we don't really have a natural replacement, just Richards who could go across, which he may do today. He starts at right back because Rodriguez is struggling a bit, and with Clemenson struggling for fitness too, I felt like it was the simple choice. And then up front, it's a straight swap. The returning Lewis for the newly injured Ribeiro. Not a serious one from the midweek game, but he will be out for a few weeks. So no seeing him again till pre-season. And then the rest of the squad, well, we bring Mitram back to the bench and Buckley drops out for him. But otherwise, it is a similar side. Just the two new players coming in. And to be fair, one adds a bit of experience and one takes away a goal threat. We're going to need Lewis in form because, let's be honest, Guy Vaknin's off the boil again. And in the summer, Dougie, I don't know how much you're going to get. You've got to address that, mate. Let's go and get through to the final game. Nothing in it for either side. Is this going to sort of be a damn squib? Maybe just drift into a nil-nil? I hope not, but I wouldn't be shocked. Dennis Serkin in the Villa side. Jacob Ramsey there. Mariba. Some good players again. On the bench, you've got Calvin Bassey. You've got Tommy Doyle. It's a good side, but I wouldn't say it's a sensational one. It is mid-table, as we all are. So let's get through the tunnel interview. Let's see if we can match last year's points total. A win will take us past it, a draw one off, and I think a defeat will leave us two away on 39. Into the first half of Villa Park. This one is going to be, I think, uneventful. Well, uneventful has been the perfect word so far. We're nearly 34 minutes in. This is the first action we're seeing from the game, and it starts with Villa passing it around at the back with Dennis Serkin. Through to Macias, looks a good chance this. Cuts it back to the edge. Serkin could shoot. Gets to the byline himself. It's great play. Is it a penalty? No, it's not. It's deflected out for a goal kick. I really don't know why we've seen that, but in the end, it remains nil-nil. And Lewis is losing out in the air again. The direct style not really working against Villa. Without Ribeiro, we don't really have that height or that player who can win a flick on at least, as Richards with a poor header into the team today, showing why he's maybe passed it. Back to Serkin, who scores. And there you go. You bring in Richards, it all goes wrong. It's definitely not the youngster who's costing us. Although, to be fair, Polito's been accused of the mistake. Rodolfo's on the yellow and got the worst rating of the four. And it was always going to take time. Rodolfo's not natural in the language yet. He's not really built a relationship with Polito. And we're drifting the right backs all the time. We're having a new one some weeks. We're having Kuto before he was injured. The Serkin hits the bar again. When did he become the biggest goal threat in the world? And then, of course, Richard's coming in out of position at times too. Add to that that we've now lost the goal threat from Vaknin again. And it continues the puzzle and the enigma that is Guy Vaknin. Went on a brilliant goal scoring spree and now has just drifted off a cliff again with no change. I don't know if it's after international breaks maybe because since then he's dropped off the boil. But we'll tell the lads to relax, build confidence. We're not devastated by the end of the season. But I don't want bad habits to creep in again and that's the problem. As Esnault at the back finds Rothwell. Can we at least get a point out of the game? As Castro picks it up in midfield towards Lewis. But again, not the best ball. Vaknin's offside. He'll score this one. There you go. He can finish the ones that are offside. Oh, it's the thing that's been a big bugbear for me the last two FMs. 
every single time they go through offside, they're just composed, they pass it into the corner, and then when they're on, they can't hit a barn door. Classic stuff, Guy Vaknin is offside, and it stays 1-0 Villa, but a better sign, as Ramsey heads the ball away here to Rodolfo. Might have to take him off soon on that yellow, as Lewis, through to Vaknin again, can't quite get there this time. Sirkin clears long, well brought down by Drame. He gets down the left-hand side, no real pressure on him again, getting dragged all over the place out there. Cuts it inside to Mariba. He beats his man and finds Ramsey. Richards intercepts the through ball, then gives it away on the edge of the box. He's not had a great game either, to be fair. Mariba shoots, Jankovic saves. We're going to have to change it soon because this defence is all over the shop. The only really consistent one is Esnal, and you look at him, he's really struggling for fitness. So I'm not sure that we're going to get anything out of this now. The header goes over from the corner. It does remain just one. We'll give it five or ten more before making changes. Right, an hour's gone. Esnault's now knackered and on a yellow and anxious, so there's no point risking an injury for the sake of a dead rubber. We're going to put Richards over to left back. Clemenson will make his comeback on the right. In fact, Rodriguez there I've bought on, haven't I? Clemenson at right back. Rodolfo in the middle I like to replace, so Mustafa. In fact, we'll bring him on for Polito, who's had the worst game and is anxious as well. I've talked a lot about getting the mentality right, so let's do it. We've got Campbell, who's struggling and on a yellow for Mitran. He also makes his return out there. And then we've got, again, Castro. Such a key heartbeat of the team, and he's really struggling for fitness now. So Tom Davis comes on. He's drifting towards the end, we've got to be honest. He's declining physically. Has signed, I think, a one-year extension. A few of them did. But he's not going to make it anytime soon. Vaknin's been poor again, but I've got no subs. So again, I save one just in case of injury. And we'll make it late on if needed. We'll throw on the right for Villa. And I've got to be honest, they are utterly dominant at the minute. As Alvarez gets it on the right-hand side. Back to Doyle. Chance to cross, but he's forced backwards in the end. It's good defending. And we're in a decent shape, but let's be honest, we've got no real threat. The ball goes up to the centre forward and he can't score. As Aubert at the back. Into Doyle in midfield. Lovely football. They're playing around us. It's a good challenge from Davis, though, who's already on a yellow. Rodolfo plays it wide. It's under hit. Please, the five-yard passes are going again. I'm really getting worried by some of the signs I'm seeing because the last few weeks, without anything changing, it's just drifting back into the nonsense we saw in the first half of the year. And I don't know what to do about the mentality of this team. No, that ball's good. Lewis is in. And from nowhere, we've got ourselves the equaliser. It's a great ball from Gruznov, and it comes out of nothing. We don't deserve it, but we won't complain. Rothwell off for Cater is the final sub. He's knackered as well. And maybe fresh legs in centre midfield will help. Cater on for the final 15. And despite what we said, we've got the better expected goals. We have more shots on target. But we just can't keep the ball. And to be fair, Villa are starting to look a threat again. We're going to encourage the lads with five minutes to go. As Bassi goes for a long throw, which Rodolfo heads away. Davis loses out in the air. Grusnov helping out though. Three players let it bounce and Mitran just skies it. Sirkin finds Baird again. He brings it forward down the right, back to Ramsey. It's his self-inflicted. We've had so many chances to clear it. They've got the two strikers unmarked in the middle. Drame's one, back to Ramsey. And he finds Doyle on the edge. Good curling effort. And a very good save from Jankovic, in fairness. It does look like Villa are the side more likely to win it. And I might drop to a balanced mentality if we don't let this in. So I don't want to lose the unbeaten run at the end. I don't want to knock the confidence. And that corner was, well, a highlight until the ball was delivered. Let's drop to balance. Let's get the point. It's a decent finish to the year. Four in four. We reach 40 again. One point short of last season, ironically, after all of that. But a really good second half to the season and a comfortable league finish. That's all we can ask for. Let's go and get through to the season review to finish off. We'll be back in a moment to see what budget Dougie's got and who were the runners and riders of this season. Well, this seems to be a problem since the update. We're getting all the end of season review messages without the end of season review itself. So we've got less core fans and more casual fans. We've had a huge drop in social media followers. Not sure why that is. The fans only want to attempt to stay in the Premier League. So not much ambition there. The board just wants to continue to avoid it. And to be fair, we're doing everything else all right. Chris Lewis has broken into the first team, which helps with the youth system stuff. And I'd imagine there might be one or two more from loans this year. But if we have a look at the dynamics, it's all looking all right. Everything's gone pretty well this season, apart from one thing. Now, 
After the news that we are only one of three clubs to make a transfer profit this season in the Premier League and we're the fifth or sixth lowest spenders overall, we got this budget, which is pitiful, and it's championship level. Top end of the championship, but it ain't competing in the Premier League. The wage budget for the year, 1.3 million a week, and the transfer budget, 23 million. That ain't getting as many players at this level. It means there's only 60 grand of the wage budget free. And if we have a look at the fact that the squad is aging, it's shrinking. And you look at this as well. Davis isn't one of those who had signed a new deal. So I apologize for that. Him and Morgan Gibbs White look to be on their way off. You've got Buckley who's got one year left but doesn't want to be here. Hollis isn't good enough. Higgins isn't good enough. And there's a few others that are passing 30 now too. This becomes a really tricky summer. There's a core of good young players here. But my worry is, and we saw it, didn't we? In January with Kelleher, as soon as a good club comes in, they just go and they'll get big money for them. I look at it now, Castro wanted by big clubs, Lewis wanted by Aston Villa and Gruznov wanted by big clubs too. We could be in a spot of bother here and I do worry in the long term about what we're going to do with this squad. I don't see us going anywhere, it's just about survival each year. If we have one little bad spell, are we then going to lose our job? I don't know. So that's a big worry for the summer, it's something we're going to have to keep an eye on. Albeit, there are some positive signs. If you look out on loan, there's some decent younger players and some of the others are improving now. So Forms is now two and a half star. Kasani is two and a half star. But are they Premier League level? I'm not so sure they are. If we have a look at the staffing and the job centre, there's some interesting jobs about. You've got Rangers at the top of the SPL. You've got Arsenal who finished 11th in the Premier League. I'm really going to go for that one and see what happens. If we can get that step up in club stature and get a club that aren't playing in Europe with a great squad, playing once a week could be a big benefit and even a chance to win a domestic cup. There's also the likes of Schalke who have gone down from the Bundesliga, but I'd like to avoid going down to a second tier again if I can. So I think Arsenal will apply for, maybe we'll go for Rangers, we'll wait and see. See if we can stop Ryan Babel because if we have a look at the Scottish Premiership here. He's moved up to eighth in the competition reputation. Rangers did win the league a year or so ago and they're both regulars in Europe now. So it's not like it's the Scottish Premiership you expect from real life. It may be a little more competitive than that. So let me know in your thoughts in the comments on that. Of course, we're going to try for Arsenal and see how it goes. They're not willing to give us a coaching badge at the minute. So that might be a stumbling block. We haven't got a reputation at Arsenal level. But let me know what you thought of the season realistically do you think we can go anywhere else with Palace or are we just aiming for that 40 points every year I think it's probably the latter so if we can find a route out we will there's some exciting young players here but if we're being honest there's probably not enough to spread the quality around and I feel we may lose one or two again in this window so if you did enjoy this season a pretty good one at Crystal Palace overall albeit the first half of the year I hated then please do put a thumbs up on it let me know in the comments what you think we should do this summer should we look for a big move and subscribe and turn that notification bell on as we'll be back in a couple of days to find out. In the meantime, we've got a huge game in our Lifting Spirits Build a Nation save. Come back tomorrow to keep up with that one. You can find the start of the new season there up in the eye above, as well as the Twitch channel, the football podcast and the blog story as well. And I'll see you back here in a couple of days time. A big summer transfer window to come at Palace, or will it be a big job offer? I'll see you next time to find out.